You're listening to Creep Geeks Podcast. Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash cheap geek. So it begins again. Welcome back to the Creepy East Podcast, episode number 157. Top nine paranormal news and events of 2019. Number eight, U.S. Navy confirms UFOs are real. Yeah. So it begins again. Welcome back to the podcast. This is episode number 157. We are counting down our top nine paranormal paranormal news and events of 2019. This is number eight. Yeah. You remember this story? Yep. All right. So anyway, as we talk about things in our podcast, we like to let people know that they can get a hold of us. And this is the Creep Geeks Podcast. And I'm Greg. I'm Omi. And we're your host of the Creep Geeks Podcast. Yeah. Yeah. So what we decided to do, just kind of give you a little heads up if this is your first time tuning into the podcast, we normally do a pretty long podcast, about an hour and a half or so, but you know, we decided for the holidays um, to do something a little bit different, you know, because where most people are taking breaks and it's kind of saying, I'll see you next year, we're like, well, we're going to power through with our top nine and just bust out a little bunch of podcasts just to kind of hold you over. Until the new year. Until the new year. And that's not saying that we're going to, you know not do podcasts until the new year, but you know, where people are taking a break and giving up on you, (laughs) we're not. I mean, there's so many people out there who aren't taking a break. They're working their full-time jobs or sadly, you know, they're overseas because they're in the military. They don't don't get that little break and uh, maybe we can be something you listen to during this time. That's right. So what we'll do is we're going to power through all this. Yeah. And do what we have to do. And then later on, we'll just take a break and not tell you. <laughs> That's right. That's what we're going to do. Or put some vague booking Facebook post up. Yeah. 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 Okay. So if you want to contact the show, there's a couple different ways you can do that. Because we like it when people share stuff with us and tell us little stories and, and share their experiences on the podcast. And one of those is a phone number. That phone number is going to be 575 208 Four zero two five. Yes, toll free number. Call, leave a voicemail if you have something you'd like to share. We have a website called creepgeeks.com, and on there is a form that you can click on. There's a tab at the top that says contact. Yep. And you can totally fill that out. And it goes to us via email sometimes. Hopefully. And then we can take and put that on our podcast, and we can also put it on our website. Yeah. And if you want to remain anonymous, we will certainly. Honor your wishes. Just let us know in the message. Yeah. You can also hit us up on social media. We're on all, pretty much all social media. Yeah. We have a Facebook page. That's Creep Geeks Podcast. You can find out when our latest episodes are up and any big news from the podcast. Be sure to not just like, but follow the page. And we also have a fairly active Facebook group, Creep Geeks Facebook group. Yes. We're super creative on the name. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's what we are. Creative. We're givers. <laughs> okay. So anyway, with this top nine list that we've been making here and we are into, this is number eight, yeah. which makes me wonder what number seven was, but that's okay. Number eight. <laughs> right. Yeah. And these are in no particular order. So we have to, that's our little disclaimer. And what we did was when we did some research over the, over the past year to find that we're the most popular uh, stories that we talked about, and these are the ones that have been in the news. 
Oh, yeah. And and when I say in the news, I don't mean just on some obscure, like, UFO-based website or cryptid-based website. I mean, like, in the actual mainstream media news where it actually made attention. Yeah. Of the general. Yeah, general public. Yeah. To the great unwashed, if you will. <laughs> and this is one of them. It was kind of huge. Right? Yeah. So what it was is, is it, it kind of went like this. And this was a bunch of little articles that went out. And it was just this big crazy thing where it says, the U.S. Navy confirms UFOs are real. Yeah. Yeah. And what it was, it says, basically, it, it really wasn't that the Navy was confirming that UFOs were real. And it also wasn't confirming necessarily that they investigate UFOs. It all sort of centered around some footage that was released. Yeah. Right. And if I remember correctly, it, w- it was, um, what's the name of the website that released all that, that information? Well, so there was one website, but it got picked up and supported through TTSA or the Academy of, the, the To the Stars Academy. Yeah, with the Blink-182 frontman Tom DeLong. Yeah. Who basically, okay, so there's a little bit of history around this whole s- sort of thing. So. Let's talk about it like this. A lot of people seen the video footage that came out, obviously taken from a fighter jet of a UFO, right? Yeah. So an unidentified flying object, if you will, or as the Navy likes to put it, unidentified aerial phenomena. Yeah. Or phenomenon, right? Phenomenon? Yeah. Yeah. And so this video footage came out, become a big thing. Um, there were some documents and some other information that came out from a website called the Black Vault. That's what it was. Right. Yeah. And so this is a website or it's dedicated to declassifying government documents. They do freedom of information requests and then and kind of put it out there. And that's where this, from what we understand where the information really came from. Right. Tom DeLong from Blink 182. Right. And the through the because that's the, that was the band he was in, if if you're wondering. And he's part of the through the uh, through to the stars academy yeah right and they put the video out they put more information out and it became kind of a thing it, it became a thing where it's like okay and then they got this information and it also came out it's like okay so you know the u.s navy says that ufos are real because they put out a way to do an, a request for information or and document right yeah. so you could actually document if you see something Right, so if you're in the military, you're in the U.S. Navy, you're flying a fighter jet or standing watch or something like that, and you've seen something, um, they provided guidelines on how to document this unidentified, you know, aerial phenomena or just basically things that were on the weird. Yeah. And that turned into, oh, the U.S. Navy, right? Yeah. The U.S. Navy is saying that UFOs are real, and they're kind of a nutshell of the whole thing. And this is confirms they exist. Yeah, and we're and we're talking about this is like a helicopter view of the entire situation, right? And we talk about this in great and agonizing detail in the podcast, but yeah, it was really a way to document something that was hard to document. And if you wanted to get information on something, you could fill out a request and ask for information if it was available. It wasn't that the U.S. U. F. Uh, that the U.S. Navy was saying that UFOs were real. Yeah. It was a procedure. It was a policy put in place. And part of that policy got put in place because you had senators, right? Congressmen and senators asking for information. And there is no information. Do- there's no documentation process in place. Yeah. So it was kind of like hard to give them the information that they were actually looking for. Yeah. Based off the videos that they seen on the internet with everybody else. So a policy was created, a procedure was created and this documentation sort of, steps or documented steps procedure if you will was created to be able to facilitate those requests and and these headlines and the way they were worded just made me so completely angry. Click, clickbait because oh yeah it wasn't just clickbait it was deceptive because i'm yes clickbait is deceptive but but yeah this it, was like blatant cast a sh- certain not shadow but cast a light on the US Navy and the US military in a certain way yeah as though it was something a lot of people, like disclosure people, really wanted. And that's not the case because there is a difference between U.S. Navy confirms UFOs exist versus U.S. Navy creates a procedure because they understand their military personnel are seeing things and need a way to document it. Yeah. 
That's what it is. They're not confirming something exists. Well, that's the way we're interpreting how that stuff works. They're confirming that, yes, we have military personnel seeing things, and we don't have a way to keep track of it. Yeah. Yeah. And so... I mean, because it could be, you know, you'd be standing watch, and you could see, I don't know, a glow-in-the-dark dolphin or something. That would go on that form. Yeah, and how do you put that in your log, and and how do you document it in a way that, you know... It has the pertinent information that the military would like, that sort of thing. See, the Russians, they had a procedure in place a long time ago oh. where it was documented how you would report things and, and do all that stuff. We just uh, we never really had that sort of thing, at least from my experience. Huh. But the videos that came out, and the videos were called like, you know, Fleur One, Gimbal, and Go Fast. And, you know, they were released. These videos were originally released to the New York Times and the To the Stars Academy. TTSA. TTSA, right? Yeah. It's, what is it? No, I'm sorry. It, I keep saying it's to the stars. It's the Stars Academy of Arts and Science. To the stars. Yeah, to the stars of a. <laughs> it's just, okay. This whole organization. Yeah. So far is has got me aggravated. It's, it's almost like they're a cult. Shh. No, I'm serious. And they meet the same criteria, right? And so, you know, have you, have you heard that? There's some, like, it's kind of like a cult. You know, you you have to support something that's a little crazy. You have to have an enigmatic leader, right? You have to have a a reason for people to believe and join the cult, right? Then you have to offer up these wild promises of whatever, like some alluring sort of promise to it. But wouldn't it be... Right? And then... Right, you have to get people on board so they're involved in the process so you can keep perpetuating it. Yeah. And then the final thing for the cult is you have to get money. See, you have I, to ask for money. I, I viewed it in the reverse way. I almost viewed it as a um, quote unquote crappy Kickstarter. <laughs> Cause, well, yeah. I mean, because you had people who, you know, you had these very large promises and these goals or these mindsets like disclosure, we're going to make disclosure happen. If you volunteer at the ten dollar tier or the hundred dollar yeah, yeah. tier, <laughs> and so you know they yeah. and, and so this this whole thing is pretty involved, and it's, it would be a really long, drawn out sort of thing to talk about, and we're not necessarily going to do that because, like I said, it's like a it's like a ten thousand foot view. Yeah. Um, you know, they even got the they, they even got a hold of some UFO material, Ooh. unidentified possible UFO type material. Okay. I mean, this is, this is like material that may have come from like spacecraft, like unidentified, you know, like Roswell craft okay. type stuff. And they bought it. They paid, I think it was like $65,000. Oh, gosh. For this chunk of metal. <laughs> and you know what's funny, right? What? So that they bought it and they sent it off to be tested. Yeah. And I think it came back as just being unremarkable, as in like it's just a chunk of metal. But, oh, you know, man. they just knew. They're like, oh, yeah, we're going to send this off, have it evaluated, right? Um, if I remember correctly, you know who sold him that metal? Who? Linda Moulton Howe. Really? Yeah, Linda Moulton Howe sold it to him. If I if I'm if I'm correct, I, I might be. I'm oh. pretty sure I am. But it's late and all things are off. All bets are off. So, you know, you had this organization and there's people in it, and one of them was a uh, oh yeah Louis Elizondo, who is the former head of the Pentagon's Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program or AA Tip. Yeah. And he, he had previously said that people should pay attention to the comments the government is making about UFOs. What the pilots encountered that day, and they're talking about the day that the film was made, where like you have these different films, the ones that everybody was watching on the internet. Yeah. And says so what the pilots encountered that day was able to perform in ways that defied all logic and all, basically, of our current understanding of aerodynamics. So, excuse me. In 2004... Right, these U.S. Navy pilots they witnessed the object whizzing around off the coast of San Diego, and making these amazing sort of. Uh, it, it was flying in a way that we couldn't do with a human in the cockpit, basically. Yeah. So they had this footage, right? This this high definition, you know, footage coming out of this jet, and they had like a camera gun foot gun, you know, like as the the gun camera up front. Yeah. They had footage there. And they recorded it, and somehow or another, the 
videotape got released, and that's what sort of created this whole brouhaha about the whole thing. Mm-hmm. So when the Navy released new classified guidelines on how to report these instances, in other words, these responses to the unknown when it comes to advanced aircraft flying into or near Navy strike groups yeah. or other sense of military for, uh, facilities or formations, right? That's sort of what created the problem. And the problem is that, you know, like we said, the Navy has n- never said, okay, hey, there's UFOs or we're investigating UFOs, but if you see something, kind of say something, and here's the procedures really what it boils down to. Yeah. So, and it kind of made sense because, I mean, it's like, okay, what, what, how do you report something like that, like we were saying before? But I, I would hope that the military would be investigating things like that because if, if, if you have craft that are operating in a way that our traditional craft don't work, Right or don't operate, wouldn't you want them to be looking at that kind of thing? I would. I, I mean, maybe it's maybe it's just maybe it's my pride or whatever, but I want the U.S. the government to always have the better technology of everybody else in the world. And period. So that's part of my pro- problem. Yeah. Is yes, we have the announcement that they have now put procedure and policy in place to have these reports done. What happens to these reports? Where do they go? Who takes a secondary look at them? Who takes a tertiary look at them? That means third dairy. And is there an investigation afterward? Like, let's just say there's an aircraft carrier on a very specific mission. And during the course of that mission, there's nine reports. And some of them are pretty significant. Does anybody look into it? Or, you know, six months later or three months later, another aircraft carrier, a separate one goes out and has six reports along a similar route. Yeah. That would suggest... There needs to be some sort of follow-up, some sort of investigation. I don't know if that happens from the details that were provided, and that's something I want to know. Well, if you it's know? classified, yeah, you don't have the need to know. I know. that That's true, but... Now, a lot of people know. are like, well, wait a minute. They work for us. And it's like, no, pilots kind of work for the country, <laughs> right? Like fighter jet pilots. Yeah. People that hold clearances like top secret or secret or interim secret or, you know, whatever... They don't really work for you, the taxpayer. They work for the country and national security. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of weird. You know, so it's, the, the academy was, what, fired up in 2017, and it's been kind of running through, and this was kind of a big break for them. Kind of got them on the map, if you will. Yeah. You know, because you got, like, Luis Elizondo working for them now, and you've got, like, Tom Long, and they're out there doing their thing, and they're like, we want to work to be a liaison and an interlocutor of the collection of information for the sciences of it. So they're talking about all this crazy stuff that they're going to do. Yeah. Including, you know, getting the new technology and using new technology and trying to recreate what they think is extraterrestrial technology. And see, how do we know? Uh, I don't know. I have so many questions about that. Well, see, they, they worked in, they worked themselves into a partnership with the army. Yeah. And that's where that sort of like, hey, we have this chunk of alien metal yeah. from a Roswell craft. Let's test it. And the army's like, sure. <laughs> so, and you know, so the government has been basically has given these guys some money to sort of work in together as a, as a partnership and stuff. And it's like, okay, here we go. Oh, it was $35,000 that she sold it to them for. Oh, so it wasn't a 65? Yeah. So. Linda Moulton Howe, you should have held out. Yeah. So here's a fun fact. She follows us on LinkedIn. <laughs> you know, that? well, she's also she's in New Mexico or is, yeah. is from New Mexico. So I thought that was pretty funny. But okay, so if the footage that we seen those three videos, the fast mover and the FLIR and the other one, and I can't remember, I, I was calling it Tic Tac video. You know, if all that information kind of came out with all the documents and stuff, and if they are real unidentified objects, then the military should be looking into it, which. I think that they are. Yeah. Right. The Navy doesn't want to call them, you know, UFOs, unidentified flying object. They want to call them an unidentified flying phenomena. Right. Okay. So, so all this sort of came out and there was a lot of like really good information that came out and backstory and all that sort of thing. And I think, um, anyway, so it was a thing because I can't think of his name off the top of my head. It's like Richard Dean. What's his name? I can never, I can't, anyway. Richard Dolan? Yeah, there you go, Richard Dolan. Okay. I mean, lots of lots of good stuff, especially if you're certain. If you have a chance and you watch, because he has YouTube videos and stuff that he does now, 
think he's been doing it for about a year and a half, two years. Uh, pretty interesting stuff to watch if you can kind of stick with it. So and I would like to say, though, that the Black Vault website released it and then didn't really get any credit for all that stuff. It was sort of picked up by Tom DeLong and Blink-182, and they're like, yeah, look what we did. And it's I like, know. hold on a second. I don't think you really did it, man, because they seem to... D- yeah, it's a thing. Okay, so, but, yeah, on top of that, it seems like the TTSA, they went into the media forefront. They were what was viral or trending. That's the name or the buzzword that was in the news for a while. Yeah, but they never once really said, oh, by the way, this information was provided to us from... yeah. Freedom of, inter- freedom of information request and act that but, you know, kind of gave them the information. It went to the black vault first and they yeah. released it. What I was getting to was because of that, I mean, because there's been a failure of recognition of process, which is, you know, the military is all about process and, you know, what steps everything takes in order to get there. These people just went willy nilly and grabbed onto buzzwords and names and, ooh, yeah. let's get the organization with a celebrity. And there was a consequence to it. I mean, since the middle of this year, Twitter has been a very toxic environment for the UFO community. Yeah, Everyone's that's true. fighting over who found what footage. They're still fighting over disclosure. Um, somebody will come up with a theory or, um, you know, some sort of intellectual question. And everybody's just ripping each other apart or re- referring to or editing TTSA. And it's just toxic yeah i mean and it's not really the ufo community's fault necessarily it's a consequence well it's mainstream media's fault because everybody's clamoring they they stirred the pot yeah and now everybody's clamoring to be a part of this because now it's mainstream it's not it's not what it used to be yeah well and it's so yeah it's a thing and i mean come on (laughs) And so the new classified guidelines on how to report those instances and stuff, they pretty much came about, you know, when I was saying before, like with congressmen asking for information and stuff like that. And it was like Mark Warner the, uh, from Virginia yeah, was one of the two senators who was asking for more information about the unidentified craft, which is like, okay, well, wh- why? What's the point? They made it this big thing. You know, we want to know. We care about the people. It's like, okay, well. You only care about the people if your name's involved. Exactly. Yeah. Because, I mean, there are I'm sure there are people involved with this sort of thing who know a lot of information and stuff, and they're just not, for national security, you're not going to put it out there. Whatever, man. I don't think disclosure is actually going to happen in our lifetimes. Really? Yeah. I mean, everybody says, anytime you have an event like this, they're like, oh, we're, we're closer to disclosure. I don't think so. Wasn't it like 2018 there was the disclosure countdown and it never happened? Right. Yeah. So I think what happens is is that if something does get out there and sort of leads to a disclosure event, it's going to be about sightings or technology or whatever from a long time in the past. And it's going to be like, okay. It's going to have to be something there you go. that as We much, all knew it, yeah. right? Because if they've been prepping us, and by us, I mean just the regular old people for years with like UFO movies and, you know, aliens and slipping information out here and there trying to control a narrative as far as what actually pops out. Yeah. So that way nobody is surprised. So that so the, the true mass of the people just don't really care. Yeah. They could do that now. And really nobody would care. Mm. I mean, in today's day and age with the, you know, Twitters and stuff would blow up for like a month and it would go to... I think the only thing that keeps the governments of the world from saying, hey, we've seen stuff, we have technology, we've been visited in the, in the future, the past, whatever, man, Yeah, is that they're holding that technology and those technological secrets to themselves and they don't want them to get out. Why? Because that gives you an advantage over another country. Hmm. I don't know. I do. I mean, think about it. It makes sense because, I mean, if you look, there was even some physicists that, physicists that actually work for the U.S. government and basically in the Department of the Navy yeah. who are filing patents, right, for propulsion technology that closely resembles what you would think would be in a flying saucer. See, and I would. And can- they have started doing those. And why would you start, why would you file for patents 
for this technology that may be in UFOs. See, I would take that a step further, though, and say there's filing the patents so that should this move to the private sector, there's another shuffling of money. Well, since most of you know our stuff is actually done through companies. Yeah. Right, like Skunk Works, it was like Lockheed Martin and those guys, all that stuff. Yeah, Boeing. I, yeah, and Boeing, uh, General Dynamics, all those big, co- big these, you know, government contractors, right? Yeah. I think they already have a technology. Huh. I think the technology's been out for a while. I think it's been tested for a while. I think probably what was seen by these fighter pilots is, is not a extraterrestrial. Hmm. I think it's basically, you know, governmental. Whether it's ours or somebody else's, who I mean who knows? Do you think it's manned? No, I don't think it's manned at all. I think it's yeah. remote control. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're about to bust out with five G. Right? Ooh, five G. You can do things a hundred times faster than you could before because that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, if they if they could control these remotely, which is simple compared to the way it was. I mean, even Marconi was able to make like a, a radio control boat. Yeah. What back in the early, early, and so I think that the government and other government governments have technology, maybe alternative propulsion type technology, and it's been out. And I think this, whatever this is that was flying by, was doing all this stuff, was either showing off, like another country's got it and showing off, or it was seen, it wasn't supposed to be seen, and maybe it was ours. Hmm. Who knows? I don't necessarily think it's like actual UFOs. I think. A lot of what we see, as far as like reports and things like that, or government, like things, they're ours. It's our stuff. So military in nature. Yeah. And then sometimes when there's a big panic, it might be military. It's just not ours. Or it could be. Yeah. It could be. Which would in turn make, you know, your government go, holy crap. Yeah. What are they doing? You know, and I mean, some of that stuff maybe it's like for them to go, hey, look what we got. We got the same, same, same stuff you got now. <laughs> you know? So... It's like if you look at dro- like drones, like drone technology, we, we think that drones are a relatively recent thing. Drones have been around since the 60s as far as we know. Mm. Because we had these rocket-propelled drones that would fly, and it would be controlled. And then, you know, you do tests where you shoot, like, harpoon missiles and stuff like that, or, you know, missile-firing exercises and drills where you shoot these drones out of the sky. Yeah. So if that's in the 60s and still being done, who knows what they have, right? So, I mean, if, if, <coughs> I, I believe that the government doesn't actually, and I'm talking about the military in general, doesn't show their hand in what they have as far as technology goes at all to the public. Mm. But in the same argument, I mean, a couple episodes ago, I was complaining because I felt like we've already lost the space race because we haven't kept up with it. Yeah, I, well, so the, is the military keeping just our warfare stuff like close to the chest or is it we're still scrambling and trying to figure out whose technology is whose, you know, that type of thing? Well, it's my hope that we have our own space force that's been in place for a long time. OK. And that we have our own clandestine sort of like space program. Right. Mm-hmm. And have had our own space program for a long time. And it's just that the public sector space program has just sort of gone by the wayside. Yeah. It's embarrassing, actually. but Because I would, you know, being ex-military, it's like I would like to think that, you know, we don't have to worry necessarily about other countries' threats. Yeah. Because that is terrifying. Yeah. Because what, what I really worry about is other countries having the same sort of sophisticated, sophisticated technology that we have actually just selling that technology to a lesser more radicalized country that may just decide to use it. Yeah. You know, because yeah. this, I don't know. It's always a thing. And this part of the cold war and the cold war is back and it's never really went away, but it sort of heated back up again. So having said that with the cold war and, you know, keeping things close to the chest is this whole disclosure movement is TTSA. Is it distraction slash disinformation? Well, I don't know. I mean, that's the thing. I, I mean, mean, because like, is it a diversionary tactic for something else? Probably. And then probably because are we all going to try to pay attention? And is the UFO community going to implode on itself because they can't get along right now while everybody else is making their secret top secret projects? Sure. 
And is disclosure only going to happen if it's broken by some kid on TikTok or on some public TV news report, you know? Yeah. Because that's how I feel these days. It's like, I feel like if we were to ever get some really solid confirmation, it's going to be like some dude like standing around interviewing like, I don't know, an ice cream shop or some feel good news story and just two UFOs land in the background type thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be with these releases or leaks of documents and videos that may or may not. I don't either. I mean, you know, and I, I I think honestly, if, if a UFO flew and landed next to the ice cream shop (laughs) and the video got out yeah, and it was like fantastic video, people would say, okay, it's fake. It's Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah. Or people would say that's completely real or People would take it a step further and make it like, or those are the Pleiadians coming down in their phase ships and just have this great amount of detail added to it, which would make the regular person, I say the regular person is maybe somebody who's not quite as knowledgeable about any of this stuff. Yeah. Would say you are freaking a nut job (laughs) and just basically completely discount the entire experience. Yeah. Because all I got to say is, you know, hey, that's not real. That's a movie. That's fake. Whatever. Well, that's like, you know, and, and see, and like, if you look at like with the whole how foreign countries have influenced our social media yeah, to elect the president, to collude, to do all of this stuff, countries have been using social media for a long time or some version of media. Yeah. And I mean, even the Russians that they had it like, I think it was in the seventies, but you're talking about it. And so that's how you, if you sway the public opinion, you can control the country. And so that's kind of what they've done. And that's all they have to do is like, if you're the United States government and somebody releases a video of maybe a top secret military craft, it's obviously extraterrestrial in origin, right? Yeah. Because they did all the X-Files stuff, like um, reverse engineer it and all this other crazy stuff. And it landed behind you in your ice cream shop and you're out there doing a video or whatever for YouTube. The very first time that that video went live and somebody seen it who is in the disinformation bureau if there is such a thing yeah all they have to do is pop in there with like two or three comments on how to handle it and create the issue and the issue will blow up and then go away yeah or diffuse the issue and it goes away (laughs) or to divert somewhere else and it goes away because i mean if you talk to anybody who believes in conspiracies at all, that's what happens now, right? Yeah. Like a high crime, high, like, okay. Um, well, I don't want to use any specifics because who knows, but, you know, something happens and you're like, oh my gosh, and the people that are involved are about to be exposed and then magically something else happens to take the attention away from that and it just sort of goes away. <laughs> and then what happens is Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> I was going to say that. But. Yeah. But you see what yeah. I'm saying? But, so it's like, oh, there it is. Something was released. Let's create a diversionary tactic or something to diffuse it. Or let's make the source seem super crazy or that you're crazy if you believe it and you keep going back and forth and eventually it just goes away and it turns into, you know, or make it even worse, right? By dramatizing the whole thing and just like making it super clickbait these days. Yeah. The Navy says UFOs are real. And you're like, what? And then you're so disappointed by the article, you just feel everything's disingenuine. Yeah. Or you're just, you know, not don't really care or not that interested. And you go, well, there you go. I knew it. And I mean, this, I knew they were real, not a big deal. This is when are they going to show us, you know, this is one of the things that literally hit the headlines and has stayed in the news for most of 2019. Yeah. It was super popular on Google's for sure. Yeah. To the point where people are still arguing about it. And, you know, we've said a bunch of stuff during this podcast episode where we're like, "Mm, Yeah. yeah, but it's distracted from things like, like what was it? Um, the week of Thanksgiving, slow moving blob that may have been a flock of birds caused White House lockdown. Yeah, you know that that's that's for discussion right there as far as unidentified aerial phenomenon. Yeah, but no, it's all been. I have a magic rock from space. Let's test it out, and you know, arguing over the the quality of evidence or the footage that's been released. Yeah. And it's like, and from what we've talked about in this particular episode of the podcast, we haven't really used any real facts, figures or details. Yeah. 
or specifics, I should say. So it's almost like an editorial. other than the names. Of the, yeah, it's, this is more <laughs> of us just going okay. Because honestly, if you want to do the research on this and check it out, if you if you've never heard of it before, you know, just just do it. Navy says UFOs are real, and you can spend a month looking at all this crazy stuff. But pretty much what it boils down to is the story made big, right, and kind of blew up for made, several different reasons, but primarily was clickbait. Made big claims and didn't live up to those claims. Yeah. I mean, so. who knows? Maybe the footage is real. I'm, you know, maybe it's real. Maybe there really is something out there. You know, maybe partnering with the uh, TTSA will, will eventually bring out disclosure. I don't know, but it, it was a big story and just, we looked at it and it's like, okay, this isn't, but really what it boiled down to was what we got out of this was some crazy video footage, which was kind of nuts. Yeah. The military created a policy on how to report unidentified flying objects or aerial phenomenon. Yeah. And that's about it. Yeah. So, and somebody paid $35,000 for some rocks <laughs> or a chunk of space metal. So, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of like the Bigfoot story, right? Yeah. You know, that was on our list. It's like the FBI has this file on Bigfoot. They've been studying Bigfoot. And it's like, no, they were studying the hair sample that was sent in. They're like, hey, FBI, can you investigate this? Because you guys investigate stuff. And they're like, sure, what is it? And they're like, we don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. I'm like, okay, cool. But I think it's a good. Yeah, it's deer hair. I'm like, what? I yeah. think it's a good commentary or example of how if you blow enough hot air into a story, it picks up a life of its own. Yeah. I mean, because we've only talked for what, you know, barely half an hour. And you could have done this in like literally a five to six minute news segment about the actual headlines. You know? Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Not months on Twitter and people literally blocking each other or reporting each other. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, it's a thing. And. Yeah. You know, and they come across and said the Pentagon finally admits it investigates UFOs, right? Ugh, and we're yeah. like, well, okay, well. Yeah, whatever. And then, as we get ready to wrap up this podcast, there was an update. Oh. Right? Yeah. And so the news articles, and we have links to everything we talk about in our show notes. The first one was, former manager of DOD Aerospace Threat Program, UFOs are real. Yeah. And then the second one was, Navy confirms UFO, right? Uh-huh. And then the third one, or, yeah, the third one was, is that Navy videos basically acknowledge UFOs, right? Which is not the case. Yeah. And then there's another one that says the Pentagon now says that there was no secret UFO program. Oh. Yeah. And so it kind of goes like this, and this is from Mysterious Universe, and it's kind of kind of ties it up, I guess, a little bit. Yeah. It was the announcement that launched a thousand ships of hope that the U.S. government was finally going to reveal the information it has on UFOs, aliens, and close encounters of every kind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so in the $600, $600 billion annual defense <laughs> department budgets, the $22 million spent on the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program was almost impossible to find. Oh. Because there actually is a program that it investigates this, which is good. There should be. And see, it was run by Luis Elizondo, who was the one that basically is now working with TTSA and with the footage that came out and everything. He's, he's not working there anymore, so obviously. Mm -hmm. It talks about, you know, the footage that was revealed from the New York Times that came out in December 2017. Yeah. And then it kind of keeps going. They talk about... You know, how the Black Vault actually revealed the contents of an email that kind of sort of tied all this together, right? Yeah. So neither AATIP, which is the Advanced Whatever Threat Identification Program, or the Advanced Aerospace Weapons Systems Application Program were, un were unrelated to the unidentified aerial phenomenon. Hmm. So it's like, oh, that's neat, right? Yeah. And then they talk about all this other stuff, and it's sort of tied in together there. And then the government is supposed to have sort of come around and said, we don't investigate UFOs. Okay. But the money is there. The money is there, but we don't do it. Yeah, but, you know, we don't investigate UFOs. We're, we just, we're not going to do that. We don't do that. Okay. So what that tells me is, 
is that if it's if there's a paper trail and it does and it looks like they have and the twenty two million dollars went for it and the person that used to head up the program says there is, I'm sure there is. I'm sure the government investigates UFOs. But now by them saying mm, there is no UFO program, is their way of saying we're not going to tell you anything. Nothing's going to come out. We're going to it's business as usual. Nothing's going to happen. You're not going to see anything. We're not going to like slip some some leaks out there that show we're not none of that's going to happen it's Ooh. basically just the way it was and they tried to like pretty much put the nail in the coffin like elizondo was not the director of a tip right had no assigned responsibilities at a tip wow yeah. and the, this is a mysterious universe and uh paul seaburn article what i really like is that they they kind of give some credit to again thanks again to black vault for breaking the story yep. And, uh, you know, they, they do mention um, the interview with Nick Pope. And he was like, when asked if there was actual UFO wreckage, you know, yes, there is. We want to believe, but whom do we believe? Yeah. Yeah. So I was like, huh. So basically what this whole thing was, as we wrap up the Creep Geeks podcast, right? Episode 157, this is our top nine. Yeah. Um, and this was our top nine, basically news and events of 2018. This was number eight UFO confirms or the U S Navy confirms UFOs are real. Right. And all the disclosure that was going to happen, what this entire thing was so far is what we call a glimmer of nope. <laughs> I remember. Yeah. So if you had like uh, the hope that it was finally going to come out, it's like, nope, what you have is a glimmer of nope. Yeah. So anyway, there you go. And, Honestly, that's why we didn't talk too deep into it because there is more sources, better information out there, and a clear, distinct sort of progression of events yeah, like Richard that's eventually going to happen. And somebody who is way more skilled at all this sort of thing, like Richard Dolan or even Nick Pope, you know, somebody like that who is like super into this and can connect all the dots, they are way better to follow than the Huffington Post. <laughs> Or even the New York Times, or us for that matter. Because honestly, I started scratching at the surface like, oh man, I am into this. And I'm like, I don't have time in my life to dig as deep as these guys do. Actually, when we talked so, about it, you spent like two days there trying to read like a 14-page document on well, one page. And then I mean, like, so just so everybody knows, I can read fast. I don't read slow or anything. No, try, it was just so It's just like, okay, hold on. And or, yeah, it's like, wait a minute. So let, and let me figure out who this guy is talking to. Yeah. And what they're talking about. And how does that connect? And that's the problem with conspiracies in general. And whether it's a conspiracy about Bigfoot existing or the government being involved in Bigfoot or UFOs or the government involved in UFOs. It's just like you just rabbit hole, rabbit hole, rabbit hole. Yeah. Cause like each, and I'm like, I got to stop. Like each page of some of these documents, you would have to have three tabs open, looking up dates, looking up random people's names, right. looking up, you know, exact, like was there footage type stuff. And it just got, I read very quickly. I like to open up multiple tabs, do my research, and it was just, this isn't, you'd get done with that 14 or 32 page document. And you're like, I learned nothing other than Bob had a conversation with some person, yeah. you know? And I'm like, that's not what I'm here for. So. Yeah. yeah. It was just a thing. So anyway, there you go. So number, uh, number eight was the U.S. Navy confirms UFOs are real. And the whole thing so far has been just a big glimmer of nope. So, yeah. yeah. At this point, we're going to go ahead and take a second and wrap up the podcast because we've been trying to keep these short. Yeah. Because these are little holiday stocking stuffers, I guess, if you <laughs> I don't know, celebrate that kind of thing. I've but, been calling them like you know, almost uh, the 12 days of spooky or, you know. Yeah, but it's not. It's like it's the top nine paranormal. Well, we have more to talk and about. News event, yeah, paranormal <laughs> news and events of 2019. Yeah. But yeah. Anyway, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let us know. We have an email that you can actually send us an email to if you'd like. It's contact at creepgeeks.com. Or you can hit us up on Facebook. Yeah. Um, or you can go to the website. But anyway, we're, we're going to go now. Okay. Bye-bye. Um, you got anything else? Well, yeah. If okay. You, Oops, sorry. <laughs> um, Stand by for important news from Omi. If you enjoyed this episode or you want to give us uh, some sort of shout out or feedback, be sure to uh, review the podcast on whatever podcast platform you listen to the show on. 
Also, if you'd like to support the show, you can always use our affiliate link, our Amazon affiliate link, in the show notes for the podcast episode. Our affiliate link does not change your price at all, and we get a small percentage from your purchase because everybody, cert, you know, they purchase or shop on Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime. Yep, and uh, helps keep the show going. That link's going to be Amazon.com forward slash shop forward slash Cheap Geek. Very nice. And everything we talk about will be in the show notes. All everything. Yeah. I'm, yeah, all of it. Yeah, I'm tired. Yep. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. All right. Anyway, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time where we'll do the top nine paranormal news and events of 2019, number nine. Yeah. Yeah. We'll tell you what that is later. So, anyway, see you later. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.